My freshman year, we went seven and twenty-one in the SEC. Damn, <laughs> seven and twenty. <laughs> seven and twenty-one. Seven and twenty-one. Seven and twenty-one. This you That's know what's a lonely crazy? feeling. Is that a lonely feeling? Yeah. I'm telling you, you just hoping to not get swept. You don't get swept that weekend, it's a win. Bro, that's a terrible, <laughs> oh my God, no. That's a terrible mindset. You shouldn't even say it, y'all record, bro. I'm talking about. <laughs> so a win is, uh, we didn't get swept. Yeah. Dang, bro. Yeah. And we back with the 2% podcast. Keanu Fentress. Debo. What? Debo. De- <laughs> Harry Ray. <laughs> All right, man, we got a... Uh, we got a, a guest here. I will call him special, but he's from a, a certain school. Um, can't say it yet. Can't say it. Yeah. But uh, he, he's in enemy territory today. We got Justin Ammons from UT Knoxville with us today. What's up, brother? How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, man? Hey. Go balls. I got to start. Go oh, balls. my gosh. Oh, man, it's going to be good, man. Yeah, man, I had to get my guy on. You know, I know he's from a different school, but that's what it's all about, you know. So we're going to talk about his experience, you know, and just to start off, man, we're going to get right into it. How was your uh, – tell us about your recruiting journey and how you got to Tennessee, being from Memphis and just the whole story. Yeah. So I started playing baseball when I was about six, I want to say, that six, seven range in. I was just on a local team around the area first, but I was I was really good and one of the ones that stood out on that team. Then a really good summer ball team came up, approached me, Duelans Dodgers, and we put together a, uh, a team around the age of 12, 13. It was mm-hmm. the first time that organization put together a team at that age group. So at first, Mr. Duelans didn't want to do it, but we kind of talked them in because we had a lot of good players like Greg Kessinger, Thomas Dillard, Riley Self. Dustin Skelton, mm-hmm. we're all yeah. on the same team. As, yeah. You know, when kids are young and good, like the whole team is good. So, um, I want to say we probably played the first two uh, seasons together, and then we were. I'm talking about our records like 65 and one, 70, 60. Jeez. Like yeah, like we were just yeah. one Royal Wood bat doing all those type of things. But with that being said, one of the troubles I had facing was um, a lot of those the kids I was playing with, um, you know, they were early signs. Like, I'm talking about- Freshman year? Yeah, freshman year, high school, committed. <laughs> so I'm here, high school, committed. And I'm still on the team. I'm good, you know, still in the top of the lineup. And uh, I'm not hearing anything. I'm going up to the coaches, uh, doing this, be like, am I, am, I, am I good? Like, should I start looking at lower schools? Because one of the big things for me and my idea was I wanted to get drafted out of high school. Mm-hmm. Like, being as a kid, you know, I'm keeping up with NBA football. I'm like, oh, that's that's where you know the money is. Yeah. Forget college. I want to go straight yeah. straight to the league out of high school. Seeing that now probably wasn't the best thing, even if I were to get picked. But uh, back to recruiting. Um, yeah, still just just trying to find. Started talking to some small schools. None of them were still really offering me. Then it came to like that junior, going into senior um, high school season, and that was when I first started getting talking to bigger time schools. And one of the things with Tennessee, it was it was kind of crazy. It kind of narrowed it down to Tennessee and Vandy, but here's the thing. Every time I played and Vandy was watching, I probably I probably didn't get one hit. Oh yeah. One hit. Damn. And the thing with my dad, he was real big. He wanted me to go to Vandy just seeing the culture and the whole background, especially baseball and being a brother. So Vandy was like one of the big things to me. I was still kind of, I was still wanting to go out of high school. It was like, I don't really don't care, care what college yeah, I go yeah, to. If I want to go to college, best believe it, I'll take any team in the SEC. But my dad, that was one of his biggest things. And I was like, one time I told him, I'm like that. Every time Tennessee comes to see me play, I'm two for three, got a homer, still in bases, making plays. I go see Vandy, I'm striking out, striking out, walking, striking out. Mm. I'm like, that's probably right the reason I couldn't yeah. get anything to Vandy. And it was got to a point. Um, I had a really good season or a really good summer going until my senior year of high school and that's when Tennessee finally made the call for me to uh and they wanted to offer me, gave about a week and made my decision and yeah. I wanted to, wanted to do it. So, so did, did you have any conversations with Corbs or <coughs> Jewett or Baxter? Who was the, uh, who was it? Frank Juice. DJ, Juice. Juice. Who, who? No, it was Yeah, Juice. uh 
Yeah, I want. I want to say. I want to say. Drew it. Yeah. Drew yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and um, yeah, we had a lot of conversations over the phone, but it was just like they never wanted to just give me that offer. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And to my dad's reason, it was like he didn't really know why. But me being a player, I'm like. Every time they see me, I'm not playing good. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like one of those kind of like sports lucky things. You never, you always prepare to have a great day, a good game, or whatever sport. But, you know, sometimes you just may have that bad game when people are watching you and just one of those things. You know? I guess so. <coughs> so you get to UT, man, your freshman year. Tell us about just that the biggest adjustment you had to make freshman year, you know, from just being on campus, you know, uh, the baseball schedule, the school scheduling, partying, like everything. Like what was like the biggest adjustment you have to make? Yeah, I definitely say time. Cause mm -hmm. before you get to college in high school, you know, your parents, your coaches are pretty much forcing you to be at a certain place mm -hmm. at a certain time compared to in college. You know, you gotta be in your class, you gotta uh, be in the cafeteria when you need to be, you need to be on the field, be ready to go when you need to be. And it's more, you know, the program gets you ready but you still have to add to the program for yourself to uh, to really grow. So that was one of the big thing I say would be time. Okay. Bet. What was yeah. that welcome to college moment for you um, on the field where you were like, oh shit, this this SEC baseball? And it could be it could be a um, session in the fall, or it could be that freshman year. Yeah. Actual yeah. real SEC. Mm. Well, uh, probably. Let me think. I remember we had Kyle Serrano. He was the first time, you know, when you before you go into college, you're wondering how it's like 95 plus feel, or even 90. You like, oh, it's 90 hard. Yeah. And he was one of the guys on our team that was throwing like 95, 96 at the time. And me, I maybe saw that one time in my life before that. And the first time I saw him, he, uh, I think it was like a four pitch AB. He threw me like change up fastball, fouled a pitch off, then struck me out. That was the first time, like, but this was like inner squad. Mm -hmm. So um, now I want to say it was my freshman year. This this is really what me up. We're playing Florida, and they're a Friday guy. Man, I can't think of his name. Singer Fajardo. Singer Fajardo. 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 So I was leaning off, and I'm like, before the SEC started, like, I'm having some pretty good leadoff a ABs. You know, I'm coming in the game, like, I'm ready to go. So we're on the road. He comes up. And I've heard, you know, quite a bit about him. There's like other SEC pitches, but this is my first time seeing him, of course. I'm ready. He leads me off the game. First pitch, change up on the black. I'm like, strike one. I'm like, yeah, strike one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Then next pitch, throws me a fastball, like 93, 94. I fouled it off. Third pitch of the AB, slider at the knees. I swing. I'm like, change up, fastball, slider. I'm done. And that was it. That I'm was like, it. yeah, that was the first time I had an AB. I had to look at myself. I'm like, oh, this yeah. dude's on one. Okay. This dude's on one. <laughs> Can't remember, I think I went 0 for him, like 0 for 3 that game. Uh, but that was one of the times I'm like, yeah, I really got to put some work in. Mm -hmm. If this is, he's consistent like this, I know other pitchers got to be in the same right. bag as well. Now that rotation that you was nasty. Yeah. Yeah, they had Fajardo, Singer, Singer yeah. and then Kowar. Kowar, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think all three of them in the league right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Kowar's in triple A the big leagues. Yeah. With the Royals probably. No, they they him and him and Singer the both Singer with the Royals. Yeah. I know Fajardo with the Tigers. We mm -hmm. and the Tigers mm -hmm. together. Yeah. yeah. yeah Singer did me dirty that week as well. He, uh, and that was one of the things in college you watched a lot of film. And I'm always seeing him do these two seams of lefties, and they're just moving out the way, moving out the way, strike through, strike through. And I'm like, all right, if one thing the two seam is not getting, he gets me down first AB 0 2. It has, still hasn't thrown him yet. He throws me a fastball, bro. It starts in my back. I turn. <laughs> Dee. I'm like, That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> Start I mean, I'm like, I see what they're seeing. You know? Oh, it yeah, you, yeah. SEC yeah. different, man. Yeah, like, you don't realize. Like for me, I, we told this story before, but like going to Mississippi State was our first road series, and like they beat the shit out of us, seventeen to four. And I was just like, God mm. damn, like how the hell did they go? What they went twenty six and three the year before? I'm like, that's not even possible, bro. Mm. It's just you facing yeah. big league after big league of first round. It's it's unreal, bro. Mm. So. Break down like the differences you saw between since you were there for both coaches, um, Serrano and uh, uh, Vitello. Vitello. 
So what kind of, what were the differences you saw in the two of them or the energy shift that you saw? I say time, energy, and intensity. I say, like, I don't knock any coach. <coughs> Both of them are great coaches. If Serrano had a great uh, background in the West Coast, what he did, mm -hmm. and Vitello, he's in his current right now in the stuff he did at Arkansas. But when I was with the first staff, it was a little bit more laid back, I'd say. Um, we played a lot of small ball, and it was big on, like, conditioning, running. Mm -hmm. That's the um, West Coast. That's the West Coast. Right? Coast yeah. 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 That's the West yeah. Coast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not really like stealing much unless we just have to steal. And um Y'all didn't have a green light? No. Nah. Dang wow. No. No. Nah. Nah. I'm okay. talking about it was like only time we're stealing is that we know we we're probably getting the bag. Like no playing baseball, trying to make him play catch, like we're only stealing, we know we're safe. And Okay. And with that one, it was a lot of, you know what I'm saying, get a man on base, try to hit him over, ball hards on the ground, low line drives. But it was really more the intensity of practice. Like, let's say practice will get started two, and let's say supposedly in five, five thirty. You know, we're out there dragging. You know, jogging to the next place, just kind of slow, chill, like a chill baseball environment. So sophomore year comes, Vitell is a new coach. Mm -hmm. I'm talking. He came the first time he talked to us. He had the. It was just straight energy. I'm like, I'm ready to play right now. Yeah. You no, know, I don't even know him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't play. I'm ready to play. I don't, like, I don't care. And uh, the thing with, with Vitell is the intensity of practice. Like I said, if we're practicing from two, let's say two, four, two to five, we're doing something every single second. So let's say we're mm. base running, we're in and out, getting base run done. But it's efficient work, you know what I mean? It's like there's a, there's a purpose behind There's no downtime. But he brings fun to the atmosphere. A lot of coaches, you know, you kind of kind of shy to talk to him. That was how kind of the first – uh, coach was you kind of hesitant to come up to him, maybe going to his office. You may think twice about it, see him out in public, you know, because yeah. you know, yeah. one of those <laughs> things kind of stand off his coach, but and it's understandable, you know. But with Vitello, it's like it's none of that. You can approach him, you can go into his office, you can talk to him about anything because you, you can just look at him and tell and just feel his energy he, that he was in this position before, yeah, as well. And that's what he kind of uses as his advantage to, uh, to recruit, but. It's really with Vitello is the intensity and the nature of it. So he, he's really a player's coach. Yeah, like, yeah. I can like from the outside looking in, like he, he looks, looks like fun. a player's coach. Like yeah. he'd be fun to play for. Like he let the boys mm. do y'all thing mm. and he gonna have y'all back. Any of y'all wrong, he gonna have y'all back, you know. With anything, wrong? with yeah. anything. There's been some stuff that happened and V's been there for the person and mm -hmm. just showing what he'll do for a person on the field and off the field, regardless of baseball, just the central energy of a person. Vitell is the man for that. Yeah. No. no, for me, I think I think he's he relates a, a better to the this next generation of ball players. I mean you we talk about this like you see y'all play like y'all talking shit to the other team. Mm. Like that's how we grew up playing, like, and all yeah. those things. Not, and, like, he's talking shit to the other coaches and shit like Wait that. And, you know, baseball is a game where they, people be like, man, you can't be doing that shit. But I'm like, that's that's what's fun. That's what's entertaining. And that's, you talk about wanting to make the game more interesting. I think I think he's doing a good job of doing that, mm -hmm. like, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's another thing with the practice. It's really got boiled down to the practice on the two separate – because. My freshman year, we went seven and twenty-one in the SEC. Damn, God. seven and twenty. Seven and twenty-one. Seven and twenty-one. Seven and twenty-one. This is you know a crazy? lonely feeling. You said a lonely feeling. Yeah. I'm telling you, you're just hoping to not get swept. You don't get swept that weekend. It's a win. Bro, that's a terrible. <laughs> oh my God, no. That's a terrible mindset. You saying we're saying y'all record, bro? I'm talking about. <laughs> so a win is uh, we didn't get swept. Yeah. Dang, bro. Uh, yeah. It was straight No, nah, because cause we coming in, oh, who we got this weekend, this is the weekend change, but you lose that Friday night. I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know what I mean? But, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much. So, yeah, we went 7 21. To the next year, we go, I think it was like 11 and 11. I'm doing. Can't be 11. Yeah, it was like 15 and 15. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, like 11. We evened it out, like, completely. Then okay. the next year, um, my junior year, that's when we start uh, went to the the regionals against North Carolina, and so that's when it started growing. But the practice intensity and the focus, because practice, 
First staff, boring, drooling, you're dragging. Practice wise, I tell her, I'm ready to go. And everybody knows baseball practice is not the funnest thing to be at, but with Vitello, it's pretty fun. Y'all yeah. play music? Yeah. See? Yeah. yeah, pretty fun. That changes everything. Pretty fun. Man, so what, what was that? You, you kind of talked about a little bit, like the culture of that your first year going 7-21, and 21, whatever that may be. I don't recall y'all, well, you can't make it to the SEC tournament that year, you know. What, what was y'all's first year making it to the tournament? Because uh, always you, I mean, y'all, Alabama. Mizzou. Missouri. No, nah, Mizzou, Missouri. I thought it was only it, two so. teams that don't make it. Yeah, it's, it's only two teams. It's two teams. Pretty, us and Missouri yeah. battling up. Yeah. <laughs> God. God. Yours, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, our, our freshman year, it, I think the situation, if I can remember correctly, another team on the other side had to, we had to beat Missouri 2 3. <clears throat> another team on the other side had to win at least one game, I want to say. Uh huh. End up losing Friday night to Missouri. Yeah. Boom. Then I think the team that was supposed to, on the other side, they end up actually winning the game. So mm -hmm. now we have no shot of making it. Next two games get swept Ooh. in the season. Yeah. See, y'all get swept by Missouri. Yeah. Damn. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was tough. At Missouri or at UT? At UT. <sighs> Coach's retirement game. <laughs> <laughs> y'all can't even send them off the right way? Nah, bro. Nah. <laughs> to be honest, no. So, what was the locker room like, the bus ride like, like that year going 7 21? Yeah. Uh, well, of course, every, uh, before every game, you know, we're wanting to win. We have our mindsets on winning. But the thing is, like, after we lose, like, one game, then it's like, you know, as baseball players, you kind of want to get that selfish mentality. It was like, all right, we may lose, but I'm still going to get my ABs. I ain't making no errors. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, that kind of played with that team. You know, people start not selfish to like other players, but more as like, right, we ain't winning. I still got to, you know, say make it to the next level somehow. So I'm going to still do what I got to do. And it, it wasn't like a more like a brotherly coach, like, hey, let's come out here and whoop, you know what I'm saying? Let's yeah. win this weekend. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let's get after it. It was more odd. Right. I'm going to get, get mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about them, but I'm going to get mine. If we That's win, cool. we win. If we don't, I got mine. That type of. Correct. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. And that's not the best mindset, culture, At all. if you want to win. Yeah, you know? if you want to win. Man, I say yeah. if you want to win and perform your best, you need a winning culture. Fact. Facts. You know I mean? And so now shifting to your junior year when y'all, things changed, and I think y'all did make the tournament, mm -hmm. right? Like, what was that locker room like? Like the mindset of that locker room? Fun energetic yeah felt like I had 40 brothers around me mm. whether I had a bad game see that was the thing if I had a bad game while we were going 7-21 it's like bad game and I took it out compared to you know like when you're in a winning environment in a good environment you have a bad game it's like okay well I had a bad game but my brothers they're all balling mm. makes me have a good game you feel me I may be bad about a couple ABs but I really don't care that much you know mm. we're nice you know what I'm saying it's like it was one of those things. Like I'm, I'm it's an easier pill to swallow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's an easy pill to swallow. I got you. Yeah. Dang. So, um, what? Just from a athletic background, like what? What motivates? What motivated you to, you know, play the game? So, for example, you know, typically football, basketball, like people, like I'm motivated by the circumstances that I've come from and whatnot. So, for you. What motivated you to pursue this professionally besides just being good at the sport? Mm. On top of it being a sport where you don't see a lot of us playing it too. Yeah. Um, well, I really looked at baseball as like a, a skill sport. And I felt like there was a swag in the sport that just wasn't there yet. Now it is coming across where, you know, a lot of us are getting in the game and a lot of players are getting in the game regardless of color. who are bringing swag to the game, which I like. But that was, I don't know, it's just, baseball gives you that feel of like, like a one-man island type mm -hmm. thing, you know what I'm saying? You can go out there and get dripped up in your gear, you know what I'm saying? And it's up to you to perform for the team. And I don't think any other sports really have that, you know what I mean? Like a lot of other sports, you got to, it's, it's really a team. Like football is for the team. Basketball is for the team. Like you can't have one-man basketball, but, you know, it's, it's a team sport. Yeah. In baseball, I mean, you're you're one person, and you gotta have it, your stuff figured out to add value to the team. 
And it was just something about that that I just love. Mm. And I became obsessed with. And yeah, it just made me chase after it. That's different, bro. I ain't never really heard anybody say it like yeah, that. Yeah, that's a that's a good imp- input right there. Because mm. um, I didn't I didn't want I didn't really have any um, like friends that played baseball five besides the kids I was playing with on my travel team. Because I'm from Memphis, everybody you know. Who or yeah. rapping? Or oh. rapping? You know what I mean? Yeah, I forgot about <laughs> rapping. Yeah, y'all got everybody. Yeah. So I mean, in those sports, I mean, those people they're good out there doing that too. Yeah, but and the boys I was playing with, they were all Mississippi boys. So I used to drive, you know, my 30, 45 minute trip, sometimes an hour to go to Mississippi, play with them, then come right back to Memphis. I'm back, you know, what I'm saying, people playing football, basketball, rapping. So mm. that's the thing. I never really kind of got into baseball just because like my friends were playing. It's really, oh, I have some friends in Mississippi. We got a good team. I like baseball. People in Memphis, they don't laugh at me, but I'm like, oh, he the baseball player. Yeah. But I did play football too. But everybody knew that baseball is my main sport. And I kind of like, you know, being the dude playing baseball. Mm. So, so what was it like growing up in Memphis? You know, with all, all that around you, you know, because we 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 know how easy it is to go down a separate route, mm. you know. And so, what 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 kept you in line? You know, what kept you? Hey, this kept you focused because you got it's a lot going on in Memphis, right. and it's easy. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I say it's really tough, especially when you're around like the age of thirteen to like yeah. fifteen. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Really, people really making that jump down the wrong path. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I kind of when I was younger, I was kind of in that little mix a little bit. Yeah. But I don't know. I want to say one something happened where I may have gotten in trouble. Honestly, nothing like bad, but yeah. I may have gotten in trouble with school. And I was really, I was getting like ISS a lot. I'm not gonna lie. And then um, my dad just had to talk to me. He was like, if you want to chase down this path, I can't, be, can't say I'll be there to support you. But if you want to stay in school and chase this baseball route, then, you know, I can help you out if times get tough. And I really, that's, that's the first day. This was like when I was 14. That was the first day when I was like, hmm. You know, that's probably, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at the time I wasn't looking at like, oh, big leagues, oh, you know, signing bonuses. Like, I just... I was just, you know, kind of living. You're 14. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then again, like a lot of my friends at the time in Memphis, none of them played baseball. They just know me as a baseball dude. So it was kind of easy for me, you know, just to go down another route. But, yeah. you know, I kind of, uh, I really I really took a step back and, you know, kind of thought about what would be best for me. And I just, I felt at the time that baseball was a good route. I wasn't 100% sure, but I'm like, you know, I am good. I'm really good. And it would be kind of dumb for me to make a, a dumb decision, mm-hmm. yeah, and I love baseball as well. So, was, was that was that was that hard to like separate yourself from your your friend group, you know, or just your people around <coughs> you? Was it hard to like say no? Uh, at first it was, but over time you kind of get a thing that people actually respect you when yeah. you want to be that other dude, you know. Mm-hmm. What I mean? And I kind of realized that at a young age, it's like, oh, if this dude is on this doing these type of things outside of, you know, probably the wrong type things. If you look at him and be like, hey, I, you know what I'm saying? I understand what you're doing, but I can't do that anymore. Or mm-hmm. at all, you know, they'll respect you and pretty much give you positive energy to keep on chasing you. So that was pretty much the thing. Everybody in Memphis loved me. One, you know, loved me for me to keep playing baseball. Wanted me to keep chasing my dream, you mm-hmm. know. There ain't nothing you can do. Yeah. Yeah. And people want you to do it as well, so. That's dope. Yeah. Because a lot of, I see a lot of these environments, people be hanging on them. Or people, you know what I'm saying, when somebody tries to make that cross against the other side, yeah, people don't want you to do that because, you know what I'm saying, it's just nothing they're a culture to and they want you to be one of them. But Memphis is great. Uh, people always showing love out there. You know, stuff may be bad, but the culture of the people out there are really good. Yeah. No, that, and uh, I mean, you can just look at it from the, the rap culture that's going on right now, like how all, I mean, you basically say, see the Atlanta of Memphis right now that's really, that's really on running a rap game, especially mm-hmm. with what Gotti and them got going on down there. I mean, I would say Chicago, but mm-hmm. we only got a couple out right now that's 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 hot, mm-hmm. hot. But you, but you can tell that y'all really want to see each other push push to um to be their best. And I mean, it's not that big of a city. It, it, nah, it, it, yeah. it's small. Yeah, it's so. really small. Everybody, everybody knows everybody. Everybody know everybody. You ten minutes to anything you want to be around. 
It's the What's up with the accent? I be hearing the accents. Yeah, yeah, the accent. I'm mad. I don't really got the accent. I was you know, say, I hear. Yeah, there's no. some words I hear it a little bit, but yeah, yeah, no, nah, it's with all like with baseball, it just it just went away. It, <laughs> so you used to have it when you were younger. I was I was playing since I was seven, so it ain't never really kick in with me. But all my boys, they come here, they you'll hear. It. You know what I mean? And like you know, what I'm saying some like you said, some words will stir off, but for the most of the accent, I ain't got it. But with the lingo and the slang and the checking part, yeah, you can meet me yeah. with those. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. How is, uh, yeah. Since, since we talking about Memphis, man, you know, you guys got, who, who, who the hardest rapper come out of Memphis, man? Hardest rapper? Yes. Or just give, like, give, like top, just give me top three. Top five, tell you a top three. Man. Right, right now. Oh, right now. Right now, in, including, including Dolph. Okay, all right. So I got Young Dolph. I'm gonna go money bag, yo. And I gotta go, yo, Gotti. You know, he he just the the king of Memphis for real. And okay. I can't not mention him. So who 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 four and five then? Four and five from Memphis. Oh. I like what Key Glock doing right now. I forgot about Key Glock. Yeah, Key Glock. Got a bunch. Yeah. And somebody who's gonna hate me, but I like NLE Chopper. I ain't know he was from Memphis. Yeah, yeah. 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 From Memphis. I ain't Pooh from Memphis too. Pooh Shiesty. See, Big Thirty. Big Glow. Oh, hey, I'm hey, sorry. Hey, hey. Let me, hey. Pooh Shiesty. Hold on now. Oh man. Yeah, nah. <laughs> You're not gonna leave Big Glow out too. She just started. No, no like, disrespect. She, can I do it like a top ten? Cause I'm. Nah, brother. <laughs> nah, you got somebody hey, got to get low dog. Yeah, nah. Cause you grew up I, on. I, man. You grew up on three six. Was that who you? Nah, you nah. Grew up on nah, nah. I, Really, Dolph was my Dolph was my ear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause okay. Guy was a little bit before me. Three six, three six, and Guy was before me. They was with eight ball. Y'all younger than me, bro. Yeah. Then uh, no, that's when Dolph no, came. No, no, Dolph and Money Bad, they they was the ones really running. It okay. When I was uh when I was coming up, but then like Pooh Shiesty and Big Thirty, I I have to give them a yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nah. So being you know you playing baseball as we all know is a uh, predominantly white sport, you get to college, you know, I guess just talk about, um, you guys have a a black training. Um, yeah, strength coach. Strength, strength, strength coach. coach. Yep. What's his name? Coach Q, Quinn Ebert. Okay. What was that like, you know, to have, even though he wasn't official baseball coach, but he's a part of the program yeah. heavily, you yeah. know? So what, what is that, like speak on the influence, like just what that was like to have, you know, Mm. A black staff member, yeah, a part of your college yeah. career, yeah. It's anytime you have one during baseball, whether it's a training manager, oh my gosh, yeah, that shit. It, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like a great feeling, it's a great feeling, it's a great feeling. And uh, really to see Coach Q, it was like first time meeting him. The only thing I knew, it was like he came from the Marlins, he was a strength coach, mm. and first time meeting him, uh, big dude, like six three, six four, two. I don't know, yeah. big dude. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's what a strength coach looked like, like creative. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, he had his first talk with us, and he's pretty much, he was like, he's, he was on the same wave with Vitello on, we're changing the culture, we're not coming here to bullshit y'all, like, mm -hmm. we're, we're coming here to work. And that's all he knows, and I'm talking about the first workout, damn. <laughs> Put it on y'all. Uh, <laughs> Laid y'all out, huh? Uh, nah, I really, that, that kind of opened. This is my sophomore year when he came in. Now I'm getting welcomed to college okay. baseball. I'm like, oh, this is how these dudes be working. Because our first, our first half, our strength and condition wasn't nothing like this. Mm. I'm talking about after the first week, I already feel sore. Like, <laughs> <you know? laughs> I'm like, yeah, this will be fun. But no, with Q, some kids will come in there like 20, or some kids will come in there like 150, 160, you have them 20 pounds within like two weeks. Cab. Yeah, this business has happened. Like, that's not a guarantee, but like, yeah, it's it's. I've seen it before, strictly okay. off, off his workout, and he know he knows what he's doing. I want to say, and but to go on top of that, him being the head strength coach, also a brother, that's even like a, and he's been in the pro ball, so he can yeah. kind of help the younger ones that's coming through, who's never been around those type players, and I can really ask him like, what should I expect? at the next level, me being, you know what I'm saying? Because mm. you've been there. He's uh, been there. Like, th those conversations are different, though. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's what I want to yeah. get to, you know, having that, 
just having that person in the area, mm. you know, it's you a can comfort. Yeah, it's a different yeah. type of feeling. Yeah, you know, it's like I was very comfortable with all of our coaching stuff that we've had. You mm. know, freshman year all to my senior year, very comfortable. But I know one year we had one intern. He was a strength like, intern, Tim, yeah. and he he was uh, there with Hammer, mm. and it was like. Just to have one person there, <laughs> you know, like everything just yeah. changes mentally, like how you feeling, yeah. you know. But I know, I know you guys have. I'm like, I, that must be dope, like for sure. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. it was it was a great talk off the field. He's he's really like a, I mean, I don't want to say friend, but like like another brother for yeah, real. you know, just mm-hmm. a little bit older. But I'm like me. Q was a big part of my career. I say that and. It would be a big part of a lot of players' career. You can have different yeah. conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can really talk to them about some you, stuff. You, yeah, you yeah, can really yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. Facts. You know, yeah. and that's. I'd be like, like, Q, what happens at the next level? Like, I know what you see on TV, but like, yeah. tell me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what's it like? You think as that they need more coaches, black coaches? You said, say that again? You think we need more black coaches in college baseball and in, I guess, professional baseball as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I say a lot of, yeah. But like, like coaches who have some like, like actual coach though, like, like not you know. Like yeah, the, like they play a little bit. Now they trying to coach. Yeah, I mean like just like, like have somebody who ha- who can like fight for you. Yeah. You know, cause I know. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm like saying. He a hidden coach, or he's like he's got, he's on staff. Yeah. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like a lot of a lot of programs should need that, especially the programs with brothers in the program, cause mm. you know, as a brother during the system. Yes. Or in the system. Uh, Sometimes, you know, it's baseball, you struggle. It's, times can get hard, and when you don't have somebody older than you to talk to, as the same color, it, you know, besides, like some players may have to go talk to their parents who never played baseball before, mm-hmm. talk to their friend who, he's struggling too, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. so now we're both struggling trying yeah. to talk to you. <laughs> no, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's good to have somebody who's in the system and you can tell them, like, hey, how does, for real, like, how does coach feel about me? Am I doing what I need to do? To get better doing this type, and they'll be real. That's that's the real right there. Yeah, yeah. And, and I truly believe, like we talk about, we want to get more blacks, African Americans playing in the game. But you think about when our parents and them came up, like they had black coaches coaching them. Mm-hmm. But you think about now, like you talk about the travel organization, same thing. Like we ain't have mm-hmm. black coaches coaching us. You go mm-hmm. to the collegiate level, you go to these top schools. It's only what is it three? Coaches yeah. at um, the, paid, you yeah. got El, head coach Elton, you got Carrick, and you got um, I don't know Edwin at Georgetown. Was them the only three, right? Three head coaches at a PWI. Really? I don't know. I, don't so. <laughs> I did not know. I that. don't know any yeah, of them. You got Carrick at Memphis, El, Elton at uh, Presbyterian, and uh, Edwin up at Georgetown. It's just man, damn, that's only three at PWIs. Oh. Head really? coaches, I'm pretty sure it may be yeah. it may be one more at a at a PW. Nah, I if, think it's only three. I think I'm I think well, I'm right. Let's on just that say one. it's four. It's whatever the number. Yeah, the number, the, the yeah. number is low and um that's crazy. That's how we go get more of us wanting to play the game, but also making it to that next level because mentally, I know for pro ball, man, and being in the Tigers organization, like you look around, bro, over two hundred some players and this. Three to five of us, and you all, y'all all spread out at different levels. Like it's mm-hmm. when you pro ball is different, dog. You go go through so much, and you don't have that that support system right there with you. That person every single day, it's damn near impossible to make it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just hard to be. I mean, Justice talked about it a little bit. You know how you got sixty seven year old white man yeah. trying to have a conversation with this nineteen twenty year old brother is like it's just hard to be relatable you know it, it and ain't nobody's fault it's just it's it tough what it is. you know what, what we gonna talk about right. you know and i mean me coaching with the phillies we had before i got there it was only two black coaches in the whole organization from triple a all the way down to rookie ball and then it's like when i came it's like oh now we got three now what you, what you mean he said we got three <laughs> i'm like oh okay yeah you know and um Nah, I think that that's needed just to have so for people. Number one, can can see it, be more willing to play. Number mm-hmm. one, number two, you know, to have those conversations that you just don't feel that comfortable having with the other coaches. You know, because yeah. they can't. It's a certain level. It's a certain level where you you, you start relating. You know. Yeah. But um, but switching a little bit, man. What what's the, what the best best stadium, best crowd you, you you played in front of, man? Stadium and crowd. 
Definitely ain't UT, man. <laughs> It might have been your, it might have been your junior, senior, junior year though. Wait, UT was. Uh, it probably because. Yeah. Nah, I don't. Yeah, we didn't get was, that. It was that still. New one. We were still. It was there. still. It was, it was still, still trash. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it ain't nothing like. Damn. Yeah. Honestly, I go South Carolina. I had a. Yeah, I know. Hey. I South can see that though. They South Friday, Carolina. Friday night. They always come out for that Friday night game. I just South? feel like I was in a big league game that Friday night. I'm talking yeah. about felt good, grass amazing. You got the mm. whole field set up, yes. and the the stadium was packed. I remember we played against Arch, Arkansas, and it was like Vitello's first time returning with like a mm. decent good team. Mm -hmm. It was like 15k at the game. They had it deep, like 15, 17k. But I don't know. There's something about South Carolina. It just I felt like a big league that whole weekend. It had the vibe, the energy, the music. No, nah, South, nah, Carolina, was, South Carolina is a play, fun yeah. place. I, I almost hit for the cycle there myself. <laughs> That's a that's a hittest part to show. Hey, bro, can you talk about moving your leg, bro? bro <laughs> every time he talk, man, he got to move his leg, bro. <laughs> and now I like swing my feet, man. <laughs> Dang, man. Look, kid, man. Feel, man? Nah, nah. Did y'all ever get in any scuffles, man, like in-house and like uh, against other teams? Like in any like fights? Fights or like... About to fight, you know, between like your own team and like other teams, hmm. at all. I say within the own team, no, nah, everybody's pretty, pretty good. Off, of course, you had, you know, saying people talking shit and make yeah. something close, but I wouldn't say nothing really got to a point, you know, where uh, no flare ups. Yeah, yeah, no flares. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but against the other against the other team, yeah. especially when Vitello got <laughs> when Vitello came. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 got some close calls. I remember Kentucky. We end up sweeping Kentucky. We struck the last batter. Supposedly, he was a brother at mm -hmm. Kentucky. Struck out, and one of my best friends was pitching red. Supposedly struck him out, and he said red called him the N word. Mm. Bro, he struck, and I know I know red didn't say it because red's my boy, my dog. You feel me? Yeah. So. He, uh, strikes out, he comes straight to the pitcher, start walking out. I'm like, bro, game's over, the series over. I think we got to scrap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they come out, we come out. You know what I'm saying? I come, out, I'm, I'm, I'm talking. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you try to stop. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but you know that was that was probably the closest. I'm talking about we face to face. We took it. Coach is holding us back. That's mm -hmm. probably that's probably the, the the closest we had to scuffle. We also had another midweek. I mean, I don't, I don't a midweek, a midweek, hey, mid -week? two. It was a. You don't remember? It's a midweek. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but how y'all scope a midweek? Yeah, because they they was having the lead towards you know what I'm saying. Oh, eighth, so ninth yeah, inning, sucking. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. No, see, this, this is a win. This song where you like I said, Vitello is here. So okay. Like I said, that's the, that's the thing with Vitello. We we hyping it in the dugout because we know. Like stuff all off, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Vitello knows what we feel like right now. You yeah. know what I'm saying. Mm. So this one came like eighth, ninth inning. I think they turned a double play to get us out, and that was pretty much our only kind of shot we had at taking this game before we lose in midweek. They turned a double play. He was completely off the bag. Then they called him saving first time. Vitello went crazy, and then when the second base, we were like, hey. Why should the f you talking to? Talking mm. to Vitello. Right, we, mm. we dipped out the dugout. <laughs> we dipped out the dugout. <laughs> we dipped out the dugout. So now, again, we in the middle of the field. But, like, we're nothing escalated yeah. from there. Yeah. yeah. So it's on site with y'all. Y'all really was like that, huh? Yeah, no, we was, no, we was ready to go. Well, Tell us how they like lit. that in terms of fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How is it? <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got to do you like that. Right, we, we can talk about it. <laughs> nah, man. Um, how is it like watching them now and seeing like where the program is now? Yeah, like, as so is especially compared, last year. Yeah, like that, yeah, that's yeah. the biggest one. Like, yeah. Last year, watching those boys play and like the energy they had and the yeah. run they were having, like how was yeah, that? Yeah, about to hit the World Series. I'm like, that was really crazy for the time span that happened. Like freshman year, I come in, we're 7 21. Now these dudes talking about first rounders, second rounders, hitting the college world series. I'm like, oh wait, hold up. Like, and it was crazy because, like I said, Vitello's first talk with us probably about 20, 20 minutes speech before practice. And it just like he came in with a vision. And I'm kind of like, is he for real? <laughs> like I understand, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I understand, like, you know, you got big like a big vision and you got players, but I'm like, we just went seven and twenty-one. <laughs> Like, come on, dog. Be yeah, like be, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, we still playing the grass field. Our third base line is lopsided. You know what I'm saying? We got mm. a hill slanted, hill and outfield. I'm like, 
We, if you really Y'all, talking like this? You got a lot of work. Bad, bro. <laughs> you got, like, said, you got yeah, a lot. Yeah, I'm like, you got a lot. You got some players, but you got some work. I'm talking to him, exactly. You got yeah. some work. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I mean, so for him to do in the amount of time he did, you know, it, it was really impressive. I said he took on like five, four or five years. Yeah, for yeah. just to get a running like a running program that kids want to go to. Right. You know, know that they'll compete. You know everybody saying? trying to go there now. Yeah, I'm everybody. Say, yeah, a lot of people. One, everybody. You got the football program that's going this way. They getting a hundred thousand. Basketball program. Basketball going, going this way. And this yeah. a new AD there too, right? Or is it the same he's AD? He's like three years. Yeah, he's like three years. In. Okay, yeah, yeah, and I know I yeah. heard like the AD he came is from trying, to, trying to change. So you got you got a, as a recruit, you got a lot pulling you to go to that, that way. Place. So yeah. baseball is good now. I get to have a good fall and winter with basketball yeah. and football. And football. Yeah, he'll always have his culture. Football. You feel me? And so. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's crazy. Was, yeah, yeah. So talk about UT now and what's going on with them this year. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's the SEC. It's a gauntlet. So it, it, is, it is. Yeah, facts, I might say because they got to face. I think they faced Florida, and then they next weekend they faced. They faced Vandy this weekend. They went LSU, yeah, yeah, we got Vandy. and then they went Florida right after that. Mm-hmm. You yep. know. You yeah, went Tennessee was, Tech in midweek. I don't know Tennessee Tech, but they all they, they, they used to be beat. good. They yeah, old. No, whenever they old, they good. Yeah, no, yeah. That one year they was they, they, they let the country in home runs that year. Mm. Tennessee Tech. They yeah. almost they went to uh, UT and almost beat uh, Texas to go to Omaha. Yeah, they were mm. like a game away. Was, yeah, game away. They different. lost the la- the mm. third game. Different. I don't. Yeah. So you so UT this year. Yeah. Predictions, thoughts. You know. Yeah. I, give, give give us like the the baseball. And then it was like you as like an alumni, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course, you know, I'm pulling for them day in, day out. You know, in the SEC, I really like, I feel like it's really unpredictable. Like, yeah, there's just so many factors that can go happen every weekend. And beginning of the season, I'm, I'm saying we got, we pushing Omaha again. You know yeah. What I mean? Again, wait, what you mean again? Uh, a year ago or two? No, years? two years ago. Yeah, yeah. A year two, ago. Years ago. two years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, again, again, hey. Again, which y'all, <laughs> y'all ain't win a game. Hey, but they were from, <laughs> yeah, I'm, we talking about seven and twenty-one. Do you know what that feels yeah, like? Bro, y'all, yeah, bro. Y'all know what seven and twenty-one feels like. Different conversations. Uh, my fault. My seven. fault. My fault. My yeah. fault. Go ahead, bro. You know what I mean, I apologize. So, I apologize. so now that I see that we're actually in the talk of like, oh, why are we acting this way? I mean, as an alum, it's like I kind of like that talk. Yeah, like, okay. Why are we bad this year? You know what mm. I mean? Compared to oh, Tennessee's bad again. You type I, that. I feel you. Yeah, so I mean that's kind of look at it. You know, we still got players on the team. We still got a lot of bats on the team, a lot of arms. I think we're like top two in homers, if that means anything. I know that means some to some people, but <laughs> now in the other stats, you know, we're pushing low. But hey, homers play. Right. Do they? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah that it mean, looks it. Co- it looks cool. Sounds yeah, cool. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about 70 21. You're not leading yeah. homers, bags. We, your we ERA is high. back to that 70 21. You're right. My yeah, fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you, you keep reminding us. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm yeah. saying? I'll y'all came it. in and y'all yeah. was nice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Y'all then, used to it. Yeah, work. that's definitely, if you look at it from that light, yeah, it's yeah. all about perspective. I feel you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. And repeat. Um, <laughs> so you got your, well, let's, let's talk about Pro Ball real quick, mm. man. So you signed with the Blue Jays. Give us like the, in your opinion, the pros and cons of, of pro ball, like things that people might not know, mm-hmm. you know, going into it. Cause I, I certainly learned, learned a lot. I know yeah. they learned a lot in pro ball, you know, so give us like some of the good stuff and then some of the things that might not get some some TV time. Man, keep that shit 100. Yeah, you know, yeah. People, people don't be, man, look, we talked about it earlier. But these like, parents and these kids do not understand <laughs> how real this shit is out here, man. And, yeah, just, yeah. and just how you said before you started how you wanted to go out of high school and then mm. you learned probably wasn't the best idea to go out of high yeah, school. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so yeah. go ahead. I say, uh, I say, first thing I always want to say that me growing up, you know, it's a big uh, thing that, oh, you're going to be playing against these Latin players, you know. They've been playing every single day since they were three, four, they're going to mm-hmm. be. But you kind of get there and like, okay, a lot of these dudes, not that good. You feel mm-hmm. me? There's a couple, but there's still some, you know, yeah. not about it. You know what I mean? And right. th- that's the first thing. The second thing I say, I'm still uh, speculative on how much does the team really know the player? Mm-hmm. You know, because. Um, Facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, I've seen it. 
Yeah, I say like you take it from a college standpoint, but it's it's respected. It's like you take it from a college standpoint. You know, you have a recruiting coach, and he can come on his off days to watch you play multiple games. Compared to an organization, it's not really like the head office is really seeing you play every game. Maybe if you're the, their first pick, you know, their second pick of the draft, but maybe not even. Yeah, then. maybe. And that's still a scout. That ain't the, you, you, that ain't, you like that a ain't, cross check. That ain't who yeah. coaches. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't yeah. none of your coaches. Yeah. 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 So it's I'm, and it's like there's a lot of dudes on teams. There's like, you kind of feel that they knew you were good, but they didn't know why you were good or how you were good. They just know you're good. Mm. After you know, however you got in the system or wherever they saw you, they understand you're good, but it's not really like a why or how like I know I'm not gonna say his name but there was a player who came in whole time he was a shortstop infielder but with the team he was playing outfield he kind of and um no my fault whole time he was an outfielder towards his later years of college then they brought him in as a shortstop and middle infielder and he was having a lot of struggle and they were like oh why you got it he kind of had to talk to him he's like hey I'm an outfielder now it mm-hmm. kind of changed more of my literature as college, but it kind of came to me. It was like, how does the team get you? And they don't even know that you transitioned to an outfielder, and now they got you playing back and short, and mm-hmm. that's not you anymore. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's one of the really things. It's like you can get in an organization and the team pretty much just may not know why they have you. They just know that you're good. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What y'all got? No, I definitely – I mean – we played together for what a year, um, so I definitely I saw it and I saw different things. And there were times where I was like, I remember you kind of were going up and down a little bit, and I was just mm-hmm. like, like what are we doing? Like we calling up like young Latin guys that just like, I'm like what what, what are we doing? Like it didn't make yeah. any sense. And so it's like you just you don't really really get some of the moves they make but you can't really question it it's just it is what mm. it is but yeah i do think that that's a very good point you make that it's you see these organizations they bring guys in and it's like do they really they have a image for you or a, a picture of what you could be mm. but like that might not be you so like you might not be everybody wants power everybody all right i'm trying to get power out of him and I'm trying to get him to hit for average. Well, everybody not gonna be here hitting for power and average. Mm. You know, he gonna hit for average, he gonna walk, he gonna get on base, he gonna steal bases. That's mm. one dude. He gonna hit for power, average might not be as high, but he gonna drive in them runs for you. But everybody wants to make that the same player and it's like, that's just not, that's not base. Baseball's right. never been like that. Yeah. Right. Everybody does their own role. One, two guys, they, they gonna get on base for you. Mm. Three, four, five, they gonna hit them in. But in yeah. today's game, they want one through nine mm. hit for power. Yeah. And so I think you're starting to see it change a little bit. But by you saying that they don't really understand who they're having is because they're just grabbing these guys. Oh, you could do this. You could do that. Well, we want you to do this. Mm. And that might not suit that person well. And then they, a year later, all right, yeah, you ain't really do much. Well, it's like, right. it was never me. I was trying <laughs> to be something I'm not. So yeah, I feel you on that. No, I think going off what you said, I think that's where the bad side of analytics came in mm-hmm. because you exactly. you had all these organizations trying to create a player. It's like baseball has been played the same way for <laughs> hundreds of years. Like you look at every team that wins the World Series, it's a complete baseball team. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think with the, the rule changes, you're going to see the draft look differently. I think you're going to see player development start to look a little differently. I think you're going to start getting more baseball guys back in into the game as um, far as on the coaching side. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not against analytics. I think I think it's great for the game, but I think you have to be able to apply it for each player within their development. And I think yes. that's what kind of got lost over the last few years. And you saw that in, um, in, in, in minor league ball. And it's kind of things I went through then. You got the politics side too. Like, you can be a later draft pick and you could be hitting 200 points higher than the guy that went the second, first, third round. And he still go get way more opportunity than you. And then you look up, you still in A ball, low A, and he going to double A. And he still ain't doing nothing. Then he may get his opportunity bigly. So it's just like, man, it's, it's a mental, tough battle um, trying to get to the show. Uh, but I think it's a it's a great game and it teaches you a lot of things, bro. And I learned no, a lot. Nah, no, I definitely appreciate it. I think it does. Yeah. And then one more other thing, I want to say that once I got on a pro ball, I really saw the I guess the independent 
like professional athlete side, you know, I feel like once you're in like a college setting, you're always around the same hitting coach, you know, the same type of vibe. But like once you're on the team with like, I don't mm -hmm. know who Harry Hinton went in the off season. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, uh, it was more like you're in charge of yeah. how you play. If you want to, you know, steal more bases, you need to on yourself put in the work to find somebody to help, you know, help you steal base compared to you can't just go to the high, you know, uh, base running coach be like, hey, I'm trying to steal base because you could get traded. He could not be here next year. It's always just different pieces moving. So I feel like pro baseball players have that one, like, training route. I don't, I don't know how to say it, but like a one, you just got to be independent, focused on know what you're working on type thing. No, you know it's I mean? very, to get to the big leagues, it ain't, it ain't team. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. It definitely, yeah. it's yeah. definitely, yeah. it's definitely yeah. about no. you. It's probably a yeah. good team to m maybe double, triple, maybe. Nah, it's, it's not a team, dog. And team. Maybe I'm triple say. A. No, no, maybe no, triple. Dog. Some maybe. organization, some Four organization, maybe league, triple A. It ain't, it ain't really a team until you get to the big leagues, dogs. Yeah, that's yeah, that's when they. That at the end of the day, if you think about it, that's the thing that they all like. That's the main goal is their big league team. How is the big league team doing? The minor league system is just to build the big league team. Yeah. So they don't really care. Yes, everybody wants to say, oh, we have a successful minor league organization. Like, they all win. But at the end of the day, nobody's getting paid to have the most winningest minor league system. Yeah. You're getting paid right. for that big league team. So their, their one thing that they think about is how can we improve this big league team? Mm. So that's really what it comes down to. And like y'all were talking, it's, it's, it's tough. And then you also got to throw in the component, it's lonely. Like, especially for black players, it's lonely. You look around different organizations, you count on, at most, you lucky if you can count on both hands how many black players you see in these organizations. Not for real. At most. And then you talk about coaches as well. Like, it's, it's, just, there, it's just nobody there. So then you got this, you in this new world, and you just by yourself, and you're like, damn, like, mm. everything's getting thrown on top of you. you. You don't really know where to go. Like, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah it's a lot. And, yeah. and it's crazy. Like, you would think, going to the professional route where you go to pro ball that you'll start seeing more diversity. I f like when I got the pro ball, that was the most segregated I ever been mm -hmm. playing baseball ever. Yeah, I'm not gonna say any teams, but it got to a point where it was like, Man, you don't got you say Latins oh, versus whites versus black. Like it, it was really like, yeah. which side you gonna be on? Yeah. Like you either yeah. with the Latins or you with the whites. Like it was literally, yeah. you which one you gonna pick? Cause they just right. wasn't messed with each other, so. Right. It is definitely, it's crazy when you really break it down. Nah, yeah. Now, I remember there was a rain delay one time. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, lands on this side. Why? I'm ch literally just chilling here by myself. Like, I don't well, know what to Well, part of that is a language barrier, too. So we can't just, you know. You look at the G League, right? Yeah. Like how the NBA really uses that to develop players. And, mm -hmm. like, they're developing those. The G League, they're developing winning coaching and things like that. I think minor league baseball should try to, simulate more how college baseball is and build mm -hmm. that team environment around mm -hmm. on the developmental side, not just from an individual player, but from learning how to be a good teammate because you're going to eventually get to the big leagues and you're going to have to learn how to be a good teammate. Facts. <laughs> um, so I think that that's something that I, that I really think should happen. Um, but yeah, and, yeah. I, and of course all that is varies from team to team. Organization. Because sure. like you guys might experience yeah. it. But I ain't experienced that with the with the Phillies in terms of what y'all did, because everybody was pretty much all the all together. Um, but switching gears real quick, man, we got to talk about best. You know, you went to UT, so best football atmosphere that you were able to go to in terms of like team that came to visit y'all. Oh, so Tennessee is the atmosphere. What team came? Like what team that came to y'all? Like, like the best game. Like for us, of course, it's a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very different. It's, it's, Not a little it, different. Very different. Don't be disrespectful. <laughs> Let's be honest. Are we don't gonna be keep it a Are we gonna keep it a hundred? We are keeping it. It's different. That's all I said. That's being. That's being us. Dog, when Alabama came in, the whole stadium is Alabama. <laughs> Brother, it's just different, brother. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When Georgia okay. come in, but Georgia we, takes the whole state. Our Roman is small. It's very way we, smaller. We got than like a six thousand people, yeah, bro. Harrison. Our Roman like, is small, yo, and we're a private being, institution. Nice. I rock with the football team, but y'all being nice. We're, <laughs> we're a private school, number one. Keep going, dog. I'll do y'all. Okay. Huh? I see y'all do y'all thing. You, you ain't got to lie, brother. Okay. <laughs> Why are you lying? I'll get people to come out and watch the games. Watch what games? <laughs> 
Anyhow, um, <laughs> of course, Alabama or like Georgia, that's always a good good game for us. Um, mm. Well, we only played Alabama once when I was there. Tennessee, and, usually. Yeah, but that's always like it's a Thanksgiving weird time. Break, it's though. Thanksgiving yeah, break. Yeah, Thanksgiving that's break. the tough part yeah, about yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. So, go ahead. Yeah, I definitely got Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. I'll go Florida B. Oh, yeah. For yeah. That. You get a chance to see Florida and Tennessee at Tennessee. That's going to be our fresh. I think it was my freshman, sophomore year. Freshman, because we were, we were winning when. Uh, Florida, first half, they got up like 21, 21 to nothing. And it was like, it was pretty tough. And I'm talking about packed house. No, it's an environment. Come to halftime break, and our whole thing was we were coming back on teams after the half. Like, that was the whole model. Go down the half. Next half comes, we coming back. I'm talking about first play, touchdown, 7-21. Boom, got a big stop. Now, for, I'm talking the whole stadium game. getting yeah. – it's, it's wild. And we end up actually going on to win that game. I'm talking about – that's probably one of the environments I've seen. I know we beat Alabama. Though, I wasn't there for that. But – Do y'all do get to interact with the football players and whatnot? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They okay. all eat with them, you know, yeah. chill, live. Some live with them. Yeah, football – some football players are some of my best friends. I say so. The, the two notables that I, I I know for sure that came out of there is the AK. Yeah, come on. Was he? The, he, was, he was there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, AK yeah, yeah. and yeah. then Dobbs. Dobbs. Yeah. Yeah. And Barnett. 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 Yeah, from here. yeah, yeah. He's from here. Yeah. You know. Okay. Yeah. Well, before we get out of here, man, just speak a little bit on just your the thing that you got going on your business and mm. talk to us what it's about and just the origin of it. Yeah. So uh, actually, me and my uh, brother friend. Known him since I was probably 13, 14. Actually came across um, uh, some numbers, and we kind of think we found the gap in college sports where a lot, a big percentage of college athletes is actually hurting them to go to college from a financial point. You know, you got these NIL deals coming out, and of course, if you're the quarterback of Oregon, you know, that's not a problem. But mm -hmm. what do you say for the, you know, the right wing at Duke, who's still a good player, but Nobody's really going to watch Duke soccer like that over yeah. there. And we, we found a, a big gap that we really think we can help college sports in the aspect. Uh, can't really get too deep into it because mm -hmm. it's still idea and it's still being in the process right now. But it's be like a tech service for college athletes pretty much. Dope. And what's it called? Broke college athlete. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Broke college athletes. Mm. All right, man. So mm. we're gonna start a, a new segment, man. Leave leave a question for the next guest. Leave 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 a question for the next guest. Hmm. Leave a qu anything. It's gonna be an athlete. Okay. So okay. I can help you out. And whatever sport, you don't really yeah. matter. Was there ever a time you thought about quitting or giving up? And what did you do to not? Mm -hmm. That's a good mm. one. So you go answer yeah. that question. Mm. Oh, <laughs> since you asked, bars. Since you asked me. Yeah, you got to answer oh. it now. Go ahead and answer yeah, it. Got you. Uh, no, y'all got me for real. All right, let me think about it. Let me think. Let me think. Hmm. Well, I'll probably go with my junior year. Just... Uh, so I just dropped down some numbers. My freshman year hit 250. Sophomore year hit like 275, three homers. And that junior year, you, it can go a lot of ways. You know, mm. you can really go up, get popped, or you can not do it not. So uh, yeah, I'm talking about we're halfway down the SEC and I'm struggling. And thankful I tell you, he was still keeping me in the lineup still because he knew that I can compete and I'd still be mentally focused. But my swing wasn't there and I was struggling. And I was probably playing couple more games that I should have until he I think it was game two against Arkansas and that's when he finally benched me like I look at the lineup and I'm like mm, not playing and we got drafted about two some two and a half months mm. maybe like a month and a half I don't know, it's in that area and I'm not playing and that's the first time I'm like man I'm not not doing good and it's kind of <coughs> Yeah, I come back from my senior year, which I, you know what I'm saying, growing up, I'm trying to get drafted out of high school. Now I'm looking at senior year of college. And uh, that was, like I said, that was the first time I'm, I had to really think and be like, okay, what can I do to just get a spot on the field? Again, because like, yeah. I'm, I'm, like my past, I'm like, oh, for a lot. I can't even tell you. Yeah. And uh, I think a couple games go by, he finally gives me another pinch hit. 
And I actually was able to get a run in, get on base, steal a base, and then finally able to get my spot back. But that was probably one time, not really thinking about quitting or giving up, but I was kind of lost, I'd say. Because yeah. I've, I've, be honest, I've never really struggled at baseball until that point. And um, <clears throat> that was the first time I kind of woke it up and I was like, I just, I gotta find something. Mm -hmm. I gotta find something. I don't care if I have to get up there and just put the ball in play. I am not striking out because when I go bad, I'm striking out. So, 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 what, what did you do? Was it more swings in the cages? Was it more prep work? Like, what did you do? Was it like just a mindset switch? Yeah, yeah, cause well, yeah, it was more of a mind switch switch. Cause when you're struggling, you're really wanting to. So you searching? Yeah, you're searching. You're mm -hmm. trying a lot of stuff. You're doing too much, and that's really what it came down. It was like, okay, you kind of got to put yourself in perspective. All right, where are you struggling at? Okay, mm -hmm. you're struggling against Arkansas playing SC baseball. All right. That's people's dream to struggle against, you know what I'm saying? Mm, Play, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So you kind of got, okay, that's one thing. And like, what can you do better? All right, I know how to, I know how to play. Let me just go back, start doing what I was doing when I was young. Mm. Just start with the fundamentals and really just take the pressure off your back. I know it sounds. That's real though. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. Sometimes you gotta say F it. Yeah, you, you like, gotta like, say F it. It is what it is. Yeah, and yeah. That allows you to become carefree. Mm. And as we know, being free at the plate is the best thing you can be. For real. You know? For real. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Really, just gotta say, just forget and just be. I feel like anytime you get into those points or you're kind of lost of your journey, you just gotta take a step back and be like, well, where'd your journey start? You know what I'm saying? You start, mm -hmm. you start playing this game years ago. Look at you now, struggling the SEC. That's a dog. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I like that perspective. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's yeah. real. Yeah, for yeah. everybody you watching. Over. Yeah, my bearing me cut y'all. Go ahead. No, I was like, no, same way. Like you struggling in pro ball. Like, bro, you're in pro ball. Like, mm. psst, let's go. Yeah. Like this is what you want. You wanted to struggle in pro. Like you didn't want to struggle, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You, you wanted to see. Yeah. 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 You yeah. wanted to see the life of a pro athlete and doing what you do. This is what they do. Enjoy it, really. Yeah. You know what I mean. That's it. I think the big thing for us, like. We're doing this podcast too, is giving out the information out for everybody watching. Like, this is a junior. He, this, he talked about his junior year. He started his freshman, sophomore year. He got benched. And then he had to figure it out again. It's like, so little Timmy at 11, 12, 13 years old is going to be fine, all right? <laughs> little Timmy. Like, man. <laughs> but no, nah, yeah. man, that's, that's dope, man. Appreciate um, you sharing your story, dog. Well, thank yeah. you, brother, for, for coming on, man. Yeah, no problem. You. Thank y'all for having that's me. That's good stuff, man. All right. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, 2%. share. To your, your mama, auntie, uncle, granddaddy, grandmama, all them. Your uncle Junebug. You know, <laughs> all right. Uh, cousin Pookie and. Cousin Ray Ray, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Uh, we out. Peace. We'll see y'all. That's it. So, you're not going to subscribe? You trip. Come on. I know y'all don't like seeing these two, but at least for me, subscribe to the channel. Man. Hey, 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 hey. That was a good one.